Great. Um, by the way, I was the only atheist at the Jesuit High School. And my best friend was the only Jew at the Jesuit High School, so, and it wasn't Alan. Anyway, I'm very happy to be here. Um, I've spent the last uh, day and a half trying to figure out what this conference is um, and who you are. Actually, I suspect, how many of you are actually marketers? Okay. How many of you are educators? And those two people didn't, you didn't all put your hands up at the same time? Hmm. Okay. Uh, how many of you have more than 10,000 people following you? Cool. And how many of you actually have more people following you than you are following? Great. So roughly I was right. Um, <clears throat> so this is what I decided this conference is. It's basically a tent revival. Uh, and so I'm very aware of the fact that I am, in fact, uh, speaking to the choir. Um, or in some cases, the actual ministers, I guess, or rabbis. So, um, the reason I'm here is one, because I had this fateful 10-minute car ride in Austin during South By, uh, and second, because uh, Jeff trusts Alan, and third, because I actually run the largest, oldest, learning-based, and actually one of the only learning-based virtual worlds for children on the internet. How many of you know about Wyville? Cool. Great. So there aren't a lot of 12-year-olds here? No. Okay. Um, so this is Wyville's growth rate, just to sort of establish some cred. Uh, so we started in 1999. That was before virtual worlds existed, uh, at least in the common understanding. Uh, we're currently at about 6.9 million registered users. And average age 12. 42% female, or 72, sorry, 72% female. And we have a very long tail, as I'll tell you in a minute. Uh, and this is with no paid marketing. So this is a conference, obviously, about this uh, phenomenon. So I also have a Twitter story. So I thought I'd tell you my Twitter story. Um, <clears throat> as mentioned, I was at South By and uh, giving a talk, or actually on a panel, titled Death of the Textbook, Emergence of Games. By the way, textbooks are dying. Do you know why? Do you know why they're dying? Who's killing them? State government. Which state government? Actually, the first textbook terminator was the governor of California who announced in 2009 uh, that they were going to get away, do away with uh, uh, paper textbooks, followed by textbook Terminator 2, uh, Perry, uh, in Texas in April 2010. Actually, I think a week ago, the Texas legislature passed a law, one law, that took the word textbook out of every educational law in Texas. Okay? Finally, by the way, notice the gestures. Who are they, who are they uh, channeling? Anyone know? There's there nobody here from uh, ancient Greek? No? Oh, well. That's right. They're channeling Socrates. Okay? Who was actually the person who first warned us about textbooks. Uh, he did it. Plato relays this, of course in a uh, conversation between the god Thuth, who was actually the god of printed language, and King Thamus, who is a Greek god king. And this is the quote, textbooks are an aid not to memory but to reminiscence, and you give your disciples not truth but only the semblance of truth. They will be hearers of many things and will have learned nothing. They will appear to be omniscient and will generally know nothing. They will be tiresome company. Uh, having the show of wisdom without the reality. By the way, why are these two governors getting rid of textbooks? Turns out it doesn't have to do, it doesn't turn, turns out they're not Platoists. Money. Little known fact, Texas spends half a billion dollars a year buying textbooks. 
Other better known fact, they're actually not used. Okay. By the way, Texas and California have roughly the same number of kids, so it's not clear to me why Texas is spending $100 million more. The total textbook budget is $6.8 billion in the country, K-12. What the textbook companies think is that they're going to make fancy textbooks that show up on your Kindle, and they're going to basically digitize textbooks, they're going to make some graphics, whatever, they're wrong. Electronic textbooks are to textbooks as magazine ads are to banner ads, with the same consequence. So there's a huge change coming. It's a $6.8 billion industry. So here is a parallel tweet track. For those of you that get bored with the rest of what I'm going to tell you about, which, by the way, has nothing to do with textbooks, um, <clears throat> death texts, Hashtag, how did the technology of the printing press change education? I think if you're going to change education now with technology, it's a good thing to think about actually why we are where we are, and a large part of that has to do with printed textbooks. So for example, physics, math, social studies, arts are divided like that because you put them in textbooks. Tests are at the end of the chapter rather than in real time as the child are learning, because that's all you can do with a textbook. Just two examples. If you have others, I'd love to see them, because I'm writing a book on it at the moment. If you're interested in hearing more about textbooks, education, what's going to happen, how games are going to probably supplant a great deal of curriculum materials in schools, uh, you can actually go to a webinar that I gave about a week ago in a wonderful group called EdWeb. There are a lot of interesting things going on. However. I told you about textbooks to illustrate, remember the story about Twitter? This is a story about, this is my Twitter story, okay? So <clears throat> I told you about textbooks to illustrate a problem with education and talking about education. And that is that everyone's a zealot. It turns out primates have deep opinions about education. And when you give talks about education and there's a mic out in the audience, they love to get up and tell you about it which is fine, except there usually isn't a question. So I wanted to personally thank Jeff and the other Twitter people for Twitter. Because what I now do whenever I give talks is all the audience questions come from Twitter, which means that they're limited to 140 characters. It's very hard to rant with 140 characters. <laughs> Right, exactly. You didn't hear that, but what she said was true. OK. Um, so I am running this show. And of course, the other nice thing about Twitter is that everyone else can participate, too, even though they're not in the room. So we're sitting there running this show at South By, and I'm getting these great questions coming in from someone called Queenie X. So the end of the show, the end of the panel, I wrote to her and said, great questions, really sophisticated questions. Um, and she wrote, FYI, I'm baby powder, and I may or may not be considered a bit of a creeper. And I said, OMG, baby powder terrorized the people that run Wyville from 2000 to 2003. She figured out how to buy 100 million couches, which is the only time we've actually shut down the database for the site. Total terrorist. By this, a nice story. She ended up being elected senator in 2003 and cleaned up her act a lot. Really? I don't think that's 10 minutes. No. She's Canadian. Whoa. Oh. So here's a question. <clears throat> Twelve to twenty-two years old, and she's still paying attention to Wyville. Why? Okay, let me step back fourteen more years. Okay, this is my daughter. I was a Caltech professor. I was the first Caltech professor with the internet at home. My daughter was one of the first children on a chat site. One day, time for dinner. She said, "I can't come to dinner because I just got elected God." <laughs> okay, I said, "Sorry, you got to eat." So she came. Swallowed her food, went back to the internet, and she, no one knew who she was. So this is a problem, okay? 
Kids want persistence. People want persistence. They want to have something, build it, grow it on the internet. This is actually a series of Yvillians. This is actually a group. I don't have time to tell you what it's about. It's actually a team figuring out when the summer solstice takes place. And it's uh, seven, or seven girls and a boy. You can guess which one's the boy. We are fundamentally a social species. If you're going to build something on the internet, I'm paralleling a lot of what's been said already. It's got to be community-based. We love to learn. I actually haven't heard learning very much in this conference. Learning is what most engages us. It's the thing that gets all of those, by the way, I'm also a neurobiologist, the way it gets all those endorphins and all that stuff, acetylcholine running is learning. We learn through play and learn. So in Wyville, there are lots of games. This is a game in which kids actually figure out what different species exist in a coral reef. And unbeknownst to them, one of the coral reefs is sick. So we now have a campaign in Wyville to figure out what's wrong with the coral reef and fix it. And they've just figured out it's a trawler. And so the Senate is considering a bill to actually declare a no trawling zone over the reef so that the, et cetera. This is really important. You've heard this. This is actually a slide I made in 1999. Okay, the difference between push and pull. It's really important. UGC, you know, user generated content. All of the avatars in Wyville are made by the kids, and all the avatar parts are made by the kids. We made them actually for about a month. They wrote to us and said, your parts are dumb. So I said, OK. We opened up a factory, a face part factory. <laughs> said, make them yourself, wow. which they did. They have millions of parts now. In fact, we are currently in negotiation to put out the first line of Wyville clothing designed by children. Wow. Whoa. Wow. OK? Nice. Uh, and we can't do it the way I want to do it. The way I want to do it is if your clothing sells well, you get a college education. But unfortunately, our company is based in California where the IP laws don't allow you to do that. So I have to move the company to Wyoming, which I'm in the process of doing. We know this is going to work because that's actually the CEO's daughter <laughs> who grabbed the line of clothes off the line we were preparing for, for a retailer and wouldn't take it off. And they had to make another one. So we know this is going to work. The result of this is progressive involvement and engagement. Kids earn salaries. The more salary, the more they engage in the site. This is a measure of this. It's actually ComScore data. This has to do with minds connect or eyeballs connected to minds. Wyville at about 65, 65 minutes per login. Uh, Habo not doing so well. Uh, Club Penguin doing worse. These are the most important statistics. And this is the last thing I wanted to say and sort of a message to you in some sense, given this is now real time. I think these, for learning and for even your brand, these are the really important things. How long are they connected? How engaged are they over one length of time? So the future is now that's true. But the future is the future. You have to worry about it now to have an impact. So I think the interesting question for you is how many will follow you? For how long and to what effect? It's not how many followers you have now. It's how many of the followers you have now you have 10 years from now. I have about a million. OK, not in Twitter, because you can't actually be on Twitter if you're 14, even though they all are. Um, <clears throat> so the bottom line, if, if you learn with them, they will come and they will stay. Learning is something primates do. It's the way we ultimately engage. Your marketing is going to have to be learning. Everything's going to have to be learning. What you do is really learning. The more you think about that, the better. If you're interested in game-based, learning-based engagement marketing, I'm happy to talk to you about it. Or everyone's welcome in Wyville, no matter your age. Uh, just go look yourself and talk to our kids. Thank you very much. Thank you.